Obsidian bookmarks is a feature that I didn't know I needed and now I can't see myself without it. This is what ties the canvas, the graph view and everything that's great about Obsidian together. I waited a while to make this video not only because it was only available to insiders but also because I wanted to see how I use it so that I can share that with you as well. Let's first go over what this new feature is. Bookmarks is a replacement for the star notes core plugin, which you likely have used before in the past. It's when you star a note and that note lives in its own star notes view. This was a very basic feature and a lot of note taking programs have it, so it wasn't really anything to be excited about. Now bookmarks elevates the concept of star notes to a whole new level. It looks simple on the surface and because of its simplicity, it's easy to dismiss it, but there's a lot to be excited for here. So let's take a look at what it can do. The first thing we gotta do is to install bookmarks and because bookmarks is a core plugin, all we need is to come here to settings, core plugins, and just make sure that bookmarks is toggled on. And let's start with the very basics and just bookmark a simple note. Let's say I have a note here for my April monthly newsletter. And this is a note that makes sense to bookmark because I work on it bit by bit throughout the month. And I can bookmark it in two different ways. I can either come here to top right and press bookmark, or I can use the command palette by pressing command P, bookmark, and it's the first option. And just like everything else in Obsidian, you can always assign a hotkey to it. And once you bookmark it, you can see that there's other attributes that you can assign to that bookmark. Because when you bookmark a note, that bookmark itself is its own entity. You can give it its own title independent of its real title. And I want to pause here because this seems like a small detail, but it makes a huge difference. Because you can decide exactly what you want to call it in a way that makes the most sense for what you're doing right now. For instance, let's say that you're working on a project and let's just use a basic example here like you're researching arguments for and against working from home. And let's say that you have a specific note on anxiety saved in your vault. But what that note really means to you in this specific project right now isn't whatever that note is titled, but rather something like side effects of working from home. So when you bookmark it, you can give it that title instead. Maybe you have an article that contradicts what you're saying, so when you bookmark that article, you can give it the title of counter arguments. And despite of what title you give it, the real file in your file system will still have the original title. So if I bookmark this note here that's titled April Monthly Newsletter, and I just title it something like Next Newsletter, and I hit save, that note is not going to be here on the top left under Next Newsletter. And when I click it, you can see it still maintained the original title April Monthly Newsletter. And this will be really useful for the other features of this plugin, which we'll get to in a second. You can also manually drag and reorder them in any way that you want. This is great because I'm used to using numbers to bring certain notes to the top, which you might have seen in my previous Obsidian videos, but now I can just simply drag and drop them. You can also right click any of your bookmarks and press reveal file navigation and it's going to take you to where that note lives in your vault. And you can also remove a bookmark by just right clicking it and press remove and it's going to be out of your bookmarks, but it's still going to live in your vault. And this is the main theme of bookmarks. They're not permanent. They allow us to laser focus on what we're doing at the moment so that we can freely discard them if we so choose. More on that in a second. So let's now take it a step further. You probably noticed that when we're bookmarking something, there's also an option to choose a bookmark group. So if we close this and we come back to our bookmarks pane, there's an option here to create a new bookmark group. So let's say I want to create a group and I want to call it April to do's. I can then come back here to bookmark this note, give it the same title that I did before. And now when I click on bookmark group, that group that we just created is here for me to choose. So I'm going to choose it and I'm going to hit save. And now it lives here inside the April to do's folder. This means that you can have a folder structure within your bookmarks. You can even have folders within folders. And I make use of this a lot, as you'll see in the later parts of the video where I go over my use cases. But we're just getting started here because you can bookmark pretty much anything in your vault. And we're going to start with graph views. The graph view is great, but as you get more and more notes in your vault, you need to filter your graph so that you can use it effectively. But the problem with that is that there was no way of saving these filters. You could spend a lot of time setting up a filter only to have to redo it again every single time you wanted that specific view. In the past, what I did, which is far from ideal, was to have a graph view note where I listed every filter that I normally used so that I could just copy and paste that into the graph view. But now we can save graph views as bookmarks. So if I come here to the graph view on this vault, so let's say that I want to filter out the graph so that it doesn't show me all my notes that are related to journaling. I can come here to filters and start with a minus sign because that tells the graph view it's stuff you don't want to see. And then just put in path colon and then all of my journals are in the journal folder so I just press journal and now all the journaling notes have been removed from the view and let's say I want to add more filters so in here I can just do a comma and then let's say I don't want to see all of my book notes so I can do negative sign path and then over here I have a books folder and then let's say I want all tags to be visible but not tags that are mocks so in here I can continue this by adding one last comma negative sign tag and then in my case, I have a mock tag. 
And then finally, I want existing files only, and I don't want to see all of the orphans. And then you can play around with groups and assign different colors based on your queries. And I did a video on the Obsidian Graph view that covers all of this, and I'm going to link to it somewhere here on the screen. But the whole point here is that you can now save this as a bookmark. So if you come here to the top right and you click on bookmark, you can bookmark it just as you would a note. And just like bookmarking a note, you can give it a title and even a bookmark group. So in here I can give it the title, no journal, no books, nor mocks. And I'm going to hit save and now it lives in the bookmarks pane. And now if I reset the filters and I get rid of everything, I can always come back to my bookmarks and I click on our saved view and it's going to take me there. So in my case, I have a bookmarks folder titled graph views, which is permanent. This is where I save any filter that I know I'll use again. If you're someone who makes use of the graph view, this is enough of a reason to make use of this plugin. And then I have project specific graph views. So if I have a project that I'm working at a time, I can bookmark a graph view of notes that are related to that project and save it to that same folder. But we're just getting started because you can also save searches. Let's say you're working on a project and because Obsidian has such a powerful search tool, you find yourself using it to search for your notes. You can now bookmark it the same way you bookmark a graph view or a note. So let's take this filter that we used here for the graph view and let's bring it over here to the search pane. And I'm just going to paste it here. And now we have the exact same thing we have on the graph view, but as a search. And now if you click here on this little icon, you can bookmark it. And as always, you can give it a title and assign it a group. And then every time you want to go back to that specific search, you come here to your bookmarks and you hit the specific search. Personally, I prefer to use the graph view filter because it's a much easier way of seeing all of the connections that you have. And you can also save canvases. So if I come here to the canvas that I use for one of my YouTube videos, I can then save this as a bookmark. So I can come here to bookmarks, give it a folder. In this case, what was this? The canvas video. And then on the canvas, I can click this button here and then bookmark. And in this case, I can just leave the title as is. And then in bookmark groups, I'm going to put it on canvas video. And then it's going to be here on the bookmarks pane. And as you can see, each individual bookmark type has its own icon here. And you can also save headers within notes. So if I come here and open a note that has a bunch of headers, I can save this particular header here. I can just right click it and go to bookmark this heading. And then I'm going to give it a descriptive title, such as important header. And then when I go back and click that bookmark, it takes me not just to that note, but to that specific header as well. You can bookmark anything you want, even attachments such as images or PDFs. Another small feature that I find myself using all the time is to bookmark all active notes. So let's say I have these three notes I'm actively working on. I'm going to give each a name and I'm going to close these two. And then I can just go to command palette by pressing command P, type in bookmarks and it's this here, bookmark all tabs. And by default, the title is the date. And then if you save it and then I close all of these notes here, you can see that they're all here and I can just come here, open in a new tab and here are all the notes again. Before we move on to my own use cases, I want to talk about today's sponsor, which is Brilliant.org. Brilliant is an online interactive learning platform geared towards STEM topics that is really good in turning difficult concepts into easy to understand bite-sized lessons. That's what makes it great. The best way to learn something is to do it. And the problem with most courses is that they aren't great at explaining difficult subjects and rely heavily on theory, which means that you don't get to learn by doing. Brilliant is different. It offers hands-on learning experiences and shows real-world examples. This helps you understand hard subjects like maths and sciences instead of just memorizing theories. And because Brilliant has thousands of lessons from AI to data science with exclusive new content added monthly, there's always something new to learn. To try everything Brilliant has to offer free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash from Sergio and the first 200 people that sign up get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. Thanks Brilliant for sponsoring this video. Alright, so let's now go over my use cases and definitely let me know in the comments how you've been using it as I'd love to hear it. Alright, so my first one is what I mentioned earlier, which is as a permanent graph view list. There's nothing fancy about it, it's just a folder like this one right here called graph views and then a bunch of views under it. There's no methodology as to what goes in there. If I use a graph view that I know there's a high chance I'll use again, I'll place it here. And then I have my projects. I usually have three to four projects going on at a time and each of them gets its own bookmark folder with all of the relevant bookmarks inside them. One of the projects I have right now is to renovate this studio right here. So I have a bookmark folder and inside it I have six or seven bookmarks all related to that project. Each video I make is also its own bookmark folder. So every time I'm working on a new video, I just come here and I make a folder for it. So in this case, it was simply called Obsidian Bookmarks Video. And inside that folder, I'll have the canvas for that specific video, the video script on a note, as well as different connections for different topics that I can reference to while scripting the video. 
Then I'm also working on a way to use AI on a vault-wide basis in a way that doesn't involve sending our data over to OpenAI. If you've seen my video on using AI in Obsidian, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And because I'm actively working on it, it has its own bookmark folder as well. And before Obsidian bookmarks, my projects were their own big note. And for me, these projects are temporary stuff I'm actively working on. And the key word here is temporary, because once that project is done, I don't just leave it there. I simply delete the bookmark and move on to the next one. And that's the whole point of bookmarks, because although I keep the final project, I don't keep the bookmarks themselves. So when I'm done with the project and I want to archive it, I just open up a new note and link all the parts that were on the bookmark and move on to something else. And that's what's great about bookmarks. They're not permanent. They let you focus only on what you're working on at the moment. But there's also another benefit here, because ever since this feature came out, I've had the bookmarks pane open at all times. So instead of seeing a massive file list on the left, I'm only seeing what I'm actively working on. And this not only keeps it top of mind for me, but it allows me to quickly move from working on different projects at the click of a button. Let's say I have some free time and I want to work on my upcoming YouTube video. I can just come here, in this case to Obsidian Bookmarks video, right click, open new tab, and then everything that's inside that bookmark folder is going to open at the same time. And then let's say I've been working on it for a couple hours and I'm running out of steam. I'd rather work on something else. Then I can just press Command P for Command Palette, close all tabs. And then I would just come here to the left and choose another project that I want to work on, right click, open new tab, and I'm ready to work on it. I also have other stuff that I know I want to keep top of mind, and it helps me to visually see it always on the left side no matter what I'm doing. For instance, I have my goals on a monthly and yearly basis bookmarked here. That way, I end up revisiting them more often because it's not up to me to remember to revisit them. They're always here, which really helps me to stay on top of things. You might be thinking, isn't this similar to folders? And I thought that the whole point was to move away from folders. And the difference here is that not only can you save a lot more than just notes and name them whatever you want, but more importantly, they're disposable, which is what I love so much about it. It's also really convenient to have its own dedicated section in the UI. That way you can work distraction free while having easy access to a familiar folder structure. I know this feature was downplayed by the community when it was first announced as something that wouldn't really impact our workflows, but this couldn't be further from the truth. Bookmarks have played a major role in the way I organize my notes, which I've shared in this video right here. 